morning cats and kittens um, today because I don't really have a lot planned for today this is going to take the form of a reply to some commentary on my previous video about uh, Milo and his trans outing outing uh, controversy and reply to a comment I got on that video so it just it gives me an opportunity to talk a bit more about this whole issue of principle and something else that I wanted to make a video on which is a lack of nuance in society we're told that we're living in a post-truth world and to an extent that's probably true but what worries me more is the lack of nuance and what I mean by that is that if you suggest that maybe Trump et al are terrible horrible people very very nasty very very worrying for the future of America and the world but you stop short of saying that they're literally Hitler uh, that they're fascist then that's somehow taken as some sort of endorsement of them so if you don't agree 100% that Trump and this inept band of corporatists are necessarily Hitler um, then that's as bad as supporting him in the eyes of some which seems um, peculiar to me and to be a rather dangerous position this kind of extremism on either side doesn't serve anybody but uh, let's get down to the reply shall we so the long way says in response to the video and some of the other comments you can go back and check those if you're really that interested but he says Jim, you forget that I'm certainly not one of the regressive left and that I started following you because of your coverage of Gamergate and even in your response you're still struggling to deny what the heck has been going on. You all have sided with factions in American society that actually want to cause people harm. You're not that stupid, so be honest for once. Free speech ends when you want to hurt someone. Considering that I talk about the harm principle in the video, if I'm not mistaken, and bang on about it all the time otherwise, this seems a remarkably strange thing to suggest. But I need to call you up on the first thing first. Let me just bring that up. Um, I'm not denying anything. I'm not sure where that comes from exactly. Maybe it'll become clearer later on. Um, but the, I have to call you out on you've sided with factions in American society that actually want to cause people harm. I'm not sure, firstly, that they want to cause people harm. I think they have a different moral system and beliefs. I don't believe that they see it as harm and I don't think that their wish is to cause anybody harm, um, at least in terms of the voters. I think some of the people in top positions and so on are basically sociopaths. That happens in corporations anyway. So I don't necessarily know that even they want to cause people harm. I think they are just indifferent to harm. But I think most people that buy into these ideologies don't actually think they're going to do people harm. I mean, to take extreme examples, like Pence and his gay aversion therapy, because it's pretty obviously clear that he's a deeply closeted homosexual with sadomasochistic electrical fetishes. But even him, in his conversion therapy, doesn't see it within his paradigm of the world as being harmful. He sees that as being a way to help people. The fact that he'd actually cause harm if he did it is, is another thing. But there's no suggestion that that's going to be a policy or anything. And anyway, at this point, we're not talking about actual political actions. We're talking about speech and discussion. So I don't think Milo, for example, wants to cause anyone harm. I don't think he cares about anyone. I think he's narcissistic and preening. But I don't think he wants to cause anybody any harm. And the other thing which is disappointing to hear because you know that's what the whole previous video was about was that there's a difference between standing up for people's rights and standing up for principle and standing up for how people exercise those rights or abuse if you want those principles. So like I said free speech is a red line issue for me. So I believe that extends to everyone. I would fight for the right of actual fascists to hold rallies um, as long as it stops short of the harm principle. 
Um, yeah, I defend. I, I went through this in the previous video. Go, go back and watch that. But the point is, there's there's a principle here, and by defending the principle, I'm not supporting what Milo said or did. Just his right to do it, you know, and we should call him out on that. But then you look at the people who were arranged against him, and they did everything they could to stop him speaking, whatsoever. That is harm. Standing up in front of a small audience and pointing out that an already outed trans person who outed themselves on the local news media and so on and campaigned on campus to impose their will on others, whether you agree with the issue or not, that's not harmful. He has a right to do that, you know? Um, and if we apply one standard to Trump and his tiny, tiny little hands, then that same principle has to apply to anyone else who puts themselves out there in that way. It's a universalism of principle and of and of rights and of freedoms. It doesn't mean I support Milo. <laughs> you know, he sp like I, again, like I said in the previous video, he spent any currency that he gained from being honest and reporting honestly on Gamergate. That that currency has been spent long since. So I'm supporting the principle, not Milo. Do I, mean, I do I have to make another video on this? Um, even terrible people have rights, and when you're applying principles and freedoms and rights universally, it's going to include application to people that you disagree with. I don't believe that his actions meet and overstep the demands of the harm principle. Your mileage may vary, but that's where the discussion would be. But saying that I'm supporting Milo or I'm a bad person for supporting free expression rights, that's not gonna fly, I'm afraid. So he goes on to say, um, when I mentioned to you about what is actually going on, you attempted to deflect it with false equivalency by saying it's happened to your tribe. Just as Vision Storm just claimed by trying to divert people's attention away from the rise of neo-Nazi white supremacist violence and abuse from factions and people connected to Trump and some of your friends, who have been launching attacks all over the country and beyond. Uh, Vision Storm won you, and obviously you do too. Uh, the best you guys can do is pinpoint one or two examples of fraud and how they're fake, and then hope people are dumb enough to take your word for it. People like you don't want anyone to know about the 1,094 incidents recorded by the SPLC. And goes on to give a link there. A great many of them verified, but none of you want to talk about that. And you're still covering for them despite knowing this friend is part of a targeted group. I think that speaks for yourself. Speaks for itself. Nobody is covering for anybody. Nobody is attempting to deflect anything. Um, at least others might be. I'm not. I'm trying to contextualize it. What we have, I mean, you referenced Gamergate, and we have something of a similar situation here. Um, this supposed amount, of, this is a supposed rise of neo-Nazi white supremacist violence, there is very little evidence for it. Um, I don't doubt that there's probably been a slight uptick, but we'll probably never know how much or get any kind of accurate bearing on it, because very likely reporting has gone up and people's sensitivity to things has gone up. So they may be calling things white supremacist violence and abuse that they wouldn't have done so before. We've also seen an uptick in the amount of things that are called white supremacist. Um, people have labeled the entire alt-right, who I don't agree with on pretty much anything. They've labeled the whole alt-right fascist and white supremacist, despite that being a fraction of it and it containing a lot of libertarian Ron Pauli types as, as well. They, you know, they've labeled the whole thing from that what, 200 hipster Nazis. <laughs> you know, that's, and we saw that happen with Gamergate and it was unfair there and it's unfair with the alt-right and it plays into their hands a great deal because if you start calling them all fascists, Anyone who's remotely in the know knows that that's bullshit, and you just end up looking like an idiot, um, and that lends them power. You know, when you lie about things and those lies are exposed, you only end up harming your own credibility. 
Um, for a while I worked in drugs education and we were trialling a different approach to how we would handle educating kids about drugs. And it was a method that had been very successful up in Liverpool and the, and the North, which is to do sort of youth culture oriented comics, which contained accurate information. So we would tell kids, you know, this is how these drugs actually operate. This is what they do. These are some of the actual side effects. So we were providing kids with an opportunity to make an informed choice. Um, now, the, the problem with previous drugs education had been that if you teach them that you know, marijuana causes reefer madness and whatever other stupidity, if you really, really over-egg the pudding and then a kid tries a joint and it's like, well, my heart didn't explode and my knob didn't fall off, um, are they lying about the rest? You know, and there are drugs that are serious problems like heroin and so on, but if you undermine your own authority by bullshitting people and they find out, um, the result ends up not being very good for anyone involved and this is similar if you start lying about something whether it's Gamergate or the alt-right or any other group and then your lie is found out that undermines your authority and thereby your capability to counter the things that they're saying and this really worries me I mean it's like it's like overnight the conspiracy theory sort of polls were swapped you know, the ostensibly left wing of American politics now, and to a lesser extent UK politics, has gone insane in, in a way that the, the right did when Obama was elected. And it's quite terrifying and disturbing to watch. Um, now, not to poison the well, but again, just to contextualise, the Southern Poverty Law Centre, who you mentioned, are not especially credible these are the people who lumped in men's rights groups as a hate group temporarily until they retracted it. These are the people that put Ayan Hirsi Ali and Majid Nawaz on a list of you know, horrible anti-Islamic extremists. Uh, when Hirsi Ali has experienced the, the worst that Islam has to offer, and uh, Majid Nawaz is a liberal reformer of Islam who has again experienced the worst that Islam has to offer. They don't belong on any kind of hate list and as has pointed out a lot of these incidents, certainly the more public ones, have turned out to be fake. And also uh, buried in that report is a huge number of incidents of abuse and violence directed the other way. So that creates a much more nuanced, like I say, uh, perspective on what's going on. You're, you're looking at a deeply divided society, a left that has completely failed to serve its, its traditional constituency, uh, the working class, um, by fixating on identity politics issues and so on, and so has given ground and given the capacity for the right wing to move in. Um, you've seen extremism on both sides rise. Right? You look at Black Lives Matter and just like the alt-right, that has a fringe element of racial supremacists and violence and the most ghastly people imaginable. They're mirror images of each other. So you have to contextualise, you have to look at this problem both sides, and you have to look at where the fault lies. And from my perspective, which is probably distorted by me being on the left, the blame heavily lies upon the left for abandoning that traditional um, that traditional constituency and fixating on these identity politics. It's no longer become about equality, it's become about special treatment by any number of granular categories of identity. And that has alienated massive amounts of people. It's crippled the ability of the left to tackle important issues because they're just verboten, absolutely. You can't talk about immigration for example, just to pick one issue out of the air. Um, but there are left-wing discussions to be had about these issues, left-wing left solutions, and we have to acknowledge that these are important issues to people if we ever want to have power and if we ever want to enact any of our progressive, though that's become something of a swear word, uh, policies. Yeah, I mean it in the original, um, I would say, proper sense. So... Am I covering for anybody? No, I'm not covering for anybody. I'm just saying these people have rights too, the same rights that you've enjoyed, that you should enjoy, that everyone should enjoy universally, that they use them to say things we don't like. That's part and parcel of having and giving rights to people. 
that they can say things we don't agree with. I mean, you go back into the past and people didn't agree with gay marriage or homosexuality at all. And it was through exercising free speech and um, attacking restrictions on it that that conversation moved forward and advance was had. So to pull up the ladder after you and to try and stop other people having that same right, whether you agree with them or not, it's just it's a beggar's belief. Um, again, there's that lack of lack of nuance, that lack of understanding. Oh, you're protecting Milo's right to free speech, therefore you must agree with everything Milo says. No, there's a huge leap in the middle there. Yes, I'm defending Milo's right to free speech. No, I don't agree with the things Milo says. A lot of them, like 90% of them, perhaps. So, there you, there you go. Um, I feel like I'm wonking on too much, but obviously I wasn't clear enough. Um, if you need any more clarification, ask. So he finishes up by saying, uh, this is not like the aggressive left or anyone to control people. This is you saying to your friends and neighbours that you see that loud, racist, screaming, threatening, xenophobic guy? I'm with him. And you wonder why they're angry with you. Uh, so I'll say this to you and Scully. You cannot have an honest debate when one side is not being honest about the truth. Okay, if there is a side here that's being dishonest, um, I'm afraid it's not us it's you because you're misrepresenting at least what I'm saying and what I'm arguing for but let's be generous and say you just don't understand um, which seems more likely to me this is the regressive left seeking to control people um, and it's me saying you're not allowed to shut him up you can argue with him you can debate him you can prove him wrong but you don't get to silence him unless he's actually causing direct harm. So it's, you see that loud, racist, threatening, xenophobic guy? I don't agree with a single fucking thing he says, but if you try and shut him up, you're worse than he is. That's what I'm saying. The principle is that free speech applies to that ranting, preening prick as much as it does to you, as much as it does to anybody else. Whether I agree with them or not, and I don't agree with them. So, I'm not with him, I'm with his rights as a human being, as a universal that applies to everybody, that applies to me, you, him, everybody. I wonder why people are angry with me, because they cannot make that distinction. And that distinction seems obvious to me. Apparently it isn't. You know, this is my second video on it, and God knows how many discussions on it. How have we gotten to that point, like I said in my previous video, where people cannot understand principle? Do not believe that they're talking to a principled person when they are. They will impugn their motives and make up all kinds of other reasons why they might be doing what they're doing. Oh, you're standing up for a racist rights? Well, you must be racist. No, there's that leap there that doesn't make any sense. There's that leap there that doesn't exist. I'm standing up for his rights because I believe in a universality of human rights, of the right to free expression in these instances, subject only to the harm principle. The harm principle is the only rational, reasonable grounds upon which you can restrict someone. So we don't allow someone to murder because of the harm principle. Um, and reciprocity, we would not want to be murdered ourselves. So we seek to protect others from, from the ordeal of murder. So I want to be free to speak. I want you to be free to speak. I want trans activists of even the most extreme and stupid variety, up until the point they actually cause harm, to be able to speak. And I want Milo to be free to speak. And I want us to debate and discuss and to destroy his ideas in discussion not to try and silence him by protests and pulling fire alarms and disrupting the meetings and, and whatever else, but by discussing and talking and asking awkward questions, though that seems to go badly for anyone that tries to do it, probably because they don't have principles, they have outrage. And I, I still don't see why this is so hard to understand and so hard to differentiate. 
Is that clearer? Um, I'm talking about principles and rights. I'm not talking about the content of what people use those principles and rights for. It, is that clear enough? I don't know. Ask me some more questions. But to loop back around to the beginning and to add some more value to this video to make it better than just the response, this is what I mean by this nuance-free society that we find ourselves in. You are Stalin or Hitler. You are nothing in between. You know, there is there is no room for me to say Trump is terrible, but he's not a fascist. You know, um, and if I express and espouse any of my left wing views, then I will get lumped in with the regressive left or whatever. You know, my views on Europe have, kind of, have cost me um, friends who exist on the right, just as my views on free speech have cost me friends who exist. Um, on, on the on the left and it shouldn't be like that there should be room for nuance and argument and discussion but there isn't if I say I'm pro-Europe I'm a Ramona Stalinist Federalist whatever uh, if I say Trump isn't a fascist yeah and it's as little as that um, then obviously I'm in league with literally Hitler the, the world contains shades of grey and many more than 50 of them and uh, nuance isn't a bad thing. If you need more explanation, just ask.